Hey everyone, this is part two of the previous conversation Tim and I were having. We divided it up into two conversations because the flow was just going well. So if you haven't already, go back to the previous episode and start there. So this is why I said earlier at the beginning of, of the conversation, this, if you, did you listen, because I, I actually sent you that recording, Doug, so you could listen to it because I thought you might like it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's fascinating. It seems like this conversation, uh, especially in kind of my world anyway, personally, is coming up a lot, uh, probably because, you know, a lot of the guys are living it more and more and more. I think maybe coronavirus has forced people to reflect a little bit more too. So a lot of my uh, people around me are starting to come to me with this kind of conversation. Um, I love it. I, I truly love it. It's, it's, it is really redefining success in many ways doesn't mean you don't make money you do you actually make more money way easier uh, but you're not attached to it right think about the five freedoms it's, it doesn't define who you are so you're not always chasing the next book um telling yourself that you've got to be busy because that's where that's what makes you a man this is this is power right this is what it means to be powerful that that level of authority over yourself to live in such a unique way that goes so against the grain from what so many people tell you you should do and how you should live. That's power. Yeah, it's true power. And, and something you said that's really interesting to me, it reminds me, I'm reading, you know, you just said about chasing the book, but the book that one of the books that I'm reading right now, Tim, which ties right into this, is a book called Healing the Shame That Binds You by John Bradshaw. Hmm. Um, and it's a book I recommended to you and Arthur. Uh, just because I, you know, I think it's a really fascinating book. Uh, not, not necessarily a, a page burner, right? But one of the things that I got out of there, and I got a lot that apply to this conversation, so we can make this a two-parter if we want to, um, is the idea that the person who gets straight Fs, right? The student who, you know, you see in high school, right? Or whatever, you know, at that age group of 16, 17, who's, drinking, doing drugs, skipping class, get failing out of school, it's easy for us to look at that person as an adult and go, wow, he's had a hard time, poor upbringing, something's going on there, right? Easy to do that. Transversely, psychologists have found the person who's at the top, the A student, right? Sumukulade or whatever it may be, that person is experiencing the exact same internal mechanisms of shame and guilt, right? Shame and guilt are driving. Pain versus pleasure, right? And it's kind of what we're talking about from a scarcity mindset of what's going on. The, you know, the kid failing out has got a scarcity mindset and that per kid is dealing with it through drugs, alcohol, failing out of class and school. It's not because they're not intelligent. We all know somebody, you know, that we went to school with who was really smart, but got horrible grades, right? There's a, Tons of stories of successful entrepreneurs, you know, that did horrible in school. I think Bill Gates was one of them. Uh, gosh, Richard Branson certainly was. There's a lot of them that were out there. Conversely, right, a lot of students who are getting straight A's are doing it out of shame and guilt uh, from what their parents will think, right? What will people think of me? They're driven through pain and scarcity. They're scared about what would happen? What are people going to think of me if I don't get the grades, right? Now, these patterns, these thought processes carry on to adulthood. Mm. You know, in my high school, I knew the guy who was a couple years ahead of me, right? But I knew him. I was in Boy Scouts as young as a kid. And he was there and he was always kind of the, the really smart, nerdy, I'll just say nerdy kid. Um, great guy. But he was a class valedictorian at the high school. Now, the high school I went to, Tim, in the United States was one of the biggest high schools in the Western U.S. Huge population, right? Lots of kids. So to be the number one class valedictorian, really tough. He was the number one. Full ride to, I think, full ride to Berkeley, which is a university pretty well known in the United States. Uh, so full ride there. Within his first quarter at Berkeley, he failed. He got kicked out. Now, what happened is he let go, right? He let go of the shame and guilt. He didn't know what to do. The, the, the guardrails were off, right? And he just completely burned it down. He had been pushing it the, the pedal to the metal, as you said, burning things out with no reason, and he completely broke down. And that's what happens to a lot of people being driven by scarcity, 
right? That fear mindset, sure. you know, you talk about managing your energy, that fear mindset is anxiety, right? Mm-hmm. People have nervous breakdowns. They resort to having a, you know, a glass of scotch or two, right? Or maybe three today for after the work day to calm them down. Alcohol is a depressant, right? I'm not judging anybody. I'm just The truth is, the scientific proof, it's a depressant. Mm-hmm. When you're driven from scarcity, you're usually driven by shame and guilt. You feel guilty you're not working more. Mm-hmm. You, know, you and I have been through it. We're entrepreneurs. We run multiple companies. You feel guilty not working 12, 15 hours a day like everybody else, all your buddies that are entrepreneurs. They're in on Sunday working, and you kind of feel guilty like, I should be doing something, right? I shouldn't be just hanging out with my family, at the picnic or at the park, or gosh, God forbid that I do that on a Wednesday. In the middle of the day, I go out and do something. And that those wheels that are spinning start causing anxiety in your life. That anxiety prevents you from being present with your wife at the end of the day or during the day, right? People, guys always fantasize about having a nooner, right? Go home, have sex with the wife at lunch, out of the office, go back to the office, you know, looking all good. Coronavirus is here, guys. You're home. How's that working for you? Mm. Right? I I watched the CrossFit. uh, What was it? Something about the CrossFit Games last night. And uh, Amelia's like, why Why are they pushing themselves so much? And it was basically this one clip of this. Um, these women, it, it, it pictured them at different points. And they all kept referring to having their, the family in the audience and they just want to do them proud. And it's so nice to see them there. And they, it was, I think it was in 2015 and there was an Australian uh, lady competing. I know you're talking it was, about. It was that hot. Yeah, it was that hot. Um, you know, they pushed and they pushed and they pushed and she like passed out. She was on a stretcher. She got rushed out. I don't, we don't know what was wrong with it. Didn't say, but she came around from that and, um, she was really upset. And when she spoke about it, she said, I'm just really upset that, you know, my family are here, they're in the crowd and I just want them to be proud of me. I'd let them down. And I found it really interesting. I thought, is this your main drive? Is your main drive right now in this games to to get approval right is it to seek that is it the guilt and the shame that you experience in 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 some way um that's causing them to to be so driven right and um it's interesting because it it can be a motivating factor for people and one of the concerns for the guys that we work with when they first experience this is crap am i gonna lose my edge am i gonna lose my competitive edge because now i'm embracing this new way of, of operating, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy without needing to succeed, then, well, crap, I don't, uh, 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 what's going to happen, right? And then realize that obviously that's, that's not true. Uh, you actually start to tap into a deeper level of purpose within what you do because when you pull by pleasure, it comes with a sense of duty. It comes with a sense of this is what I am here to do. And it becomes very purposeful, right? You let go of I need to do this to make money so I can provide and I can prove to actually, hey, I'm choosing this. I'm letting this pull me because this is who I am. Two very different journeys. And the first one, similar to the, to the CrossFit Games lady, just, you know, I was kind of wondering, uh, I don't know this is for sure how it was, but, you know, even when they achieve in that position, for some people, like the guys that come to us, it never lands. It's never enough. Because it comes from the guilt and the shame, and because it comes from scarcity and proving, it's never enough. It's a void that can never be filled. Hence, the chasing and continuing, the five agonies and no man's land. It's it's exhausting, quite frankly, to be in that position. And it's the worst combination too, because you're so exhausted from the energy, but then you're never being full. And this is where you know you you can walk in and you you might get a compliment from somebody on how great you are in business, but you just won't land. You, nah, you'll brush it off. You'll say something. You'll you'll push on to somebody else. You'll have a record month and it'll be like, ah, that was lucky. And you can start to feel like an imposter and be like, you know, how did I get here? I don't deserve this. And you worry about the rug be put, being pulled from beneath you because you just chanced this one. You were just, you were lucky. You, you got lucky and someone's going to figure you out, right? There's a whole cascade of things that go with it. Whereas, you know, when you're able to make that transition and come from that, place of abundance and be pulled by pleasure and be full. It's almost like being full and being empty at the same time because you are full, you're overflowing, 
and also you are emptying out because you are you are allowing yourself to be pulled and then you know putting the the uh, purpose into your life or whatever to the point where you're letting it all out it's, it's just you get what i mean it's it's an interesting dance that then goes on in that place but it's a great place to live um a really great place to live and the the biggest thing in my opinion and i keep you and keep I keep going man you're doing great in that spot is being able to lean in to all the beliefs that come up or the moments that happen that tell you you should be busier you are being lazy this should be harder because you're literally you're rewiring your nervous system as well you're rewiring pathways in your mind because for so long, for as long as you've been pushed by pain and from scarcity, you you biochemically have been operating at a hustle, right? Adrenaline, cortisol, you, you, your body has literally become conditioned to operate in fight or flight. Anxiety and, and all the rest of it, which is fed by caffeine and a lack of sleep and not enough rest, and it just feeds it. It's a cycle. So then when you shift out of that, it feels very different within your body there's a, there's a reconditioning that gets to occur. And in that place, if anyone that's listening is, is in this space, and what I'd recommend you do is stack the evidence for how this place is enabling you to experience what you want faster and easier because you've got to stack that evidence to continue tipping those scales, right? Uh, this is where your weekly reviews can become really important. And you're journaling, so you're writing down those wins and those lessons, so you can continue to 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 fire those new pathways away from the fight and flight into the abundance and thriving. Um, it's key. Yeah, I mean, there's a story I want to tell, but I know we're doing a Facebook Live here to the Facebook group, and that story is probably more appropriate for that one, so I'll save it. But you know, when you talk about that space that you're coming from, that space of you know of scarcity and drive. And when I look back at that, Tim, like when I was doing it, right, I was in Santa Barbara, California, running multiple companies and priding myself in outworking everybody, right? Almost taking pride going into the office on Sunday. Like that was a badge of honor for me. And, you know, and feeling guilty, quite honestly, I felt so guilty when I wasn't working that I should be doing something. Like I'd have my laptop on my lap watching a movie, right? Wow. Maybe, yeah. Oh yeah. I do all the time right? Watching a movie, have my laptop out and just doing busy work just so mm -hmm. I felt more productive, you know, probably usually having a cocktail in one hand or a beer, you know, so I feel like I'm being, being part of society or whatever and getting things done. But a lot of that was just guilt driven, right? Very, mm -hmm. very guilt driven and looking at, you know, trying to figure out now in the state I'm in of where did that come from? And that's why I think the alpha reset, you know, when we, you know, guys coming in there, they release, they reclaim and they move on, right? From a place of power. That's how you rewire wire those neural pathways. What are you feeding? Mm. You mentioned the idea of, you know, hey, and this is the conversation I had, you know, ah, you know, I'm a, I'm a CEO, I'm a business owner, I should be working harder, I should be coming up with alternate revenue streams, I should be doing this, I, sh I should. Every time, guys, we use the word should, that means we're comparing ourselves against something or somebody else right? And whenever you're comparing yourself against someone or something else, really you're setting yourself up for disaster, right? You just are because you don't know the full gamut and you're really putting yourself down. Now, in most cases for us alpha guys, we're comparing ourselves against a future self that does not exist, right? I should be making more money. I should have a better relationship. I should have a relationship that, you know, you know, I want to have nooners with my wife. And here I am at home all the time and we're barely having sex, yes. right? It's, you know, that's the thing. What's the reality? I should be. And when you go into that mindset of should, it depresses you, right? It depresses who you are, depresses your physiology and your psychology. There's a whole cascade of hormones that are released that we don't need to get into <laughs> for this podcast, but it starts that, that downward crescendo, right? Where if you're not on top of your game, you know, that can resort to drinking, right? It can resort to, you know, getting caught up in porn. It can get resort to Facebook. Or it can resort to busy work, hiding out in your business, right? Why are you hiding out? You know, if you are, 
Like there's no BS. Don't, if you even think for an inkling that what I just said hit home a little bit, then you're definitely hiding home, hiding out there. Right. And that's where you go into, okay, I'm in scarcity mode. Scarcity has to do with fear. Scarcity has to do with guilt. Scarcity has to do with shame. Scarcity has to do with comparison. If I'm using the word should in my inner vocabulary, right? What you're saying to yourself, now you're in scarcity mindset. It's time to get out of that. You can't build from a place of scarcity, not effectively. You can build little things, put some stuff in place, hustle or what have you, but you can't do it effectively. If you're in a place from abundance, energy is going to flow. It's like a cycle, right? You got to learn to harness that energy with inside your body. There's breathing techniques you can do. Tim's actually doing a whole series of breathing techniques uh, for the guys in the brotherhood. There's a bunch of languaging you can do, which I'm going to be putting together for guys. There's all kinds of mechanisms that can get in there. But the mechanisms are good only if it starts from a clean slate. You got to have a clean slate in there. And you've mm. got to have a clean slate of which to jump off of. Mm. I just reminded me of something I wrote on the 15th of April, 2020, in my journal. Um, it's kind of a, a random note, but it says, out to riches, inner poverty. Gain the world, lose your soul. How, how to gain the world without losing your soul. It just came to mind. It's, I'd say that exemplifies the guys that, you know, the guys that come to us, I think it exemplifies a lot of guys, to be honest, because I think it's a, a, a lie, a methodology that society has fed most men. I was actually on a panel discussion this week talking about, you know, modern masculinity and all that kind of stuff, um, whatever that means. But anyway, point being is um, we got onto this topic. Yeah, and I really do believe that it's a, it's a, that's a pandemic. Right, you know, that's a pandemic of, of these guys that do have outer riches but inner poverty, and that's where then the shame comes in as well. The outer riches have been created by scarcity, and that's why there's inner poverty because it's never enough, right? Keep going and going and going. Um, and they do gain the world, the material world, anyway, to what society would claim as the world the car, the home, the holiday, the watch, the family, the the woman, the whatever, right? Um, but then lose their soul in the process because they're just so driven to make money regardless of how they make it usually. that you know, I'm not saying they do illegal things, but they don't really do it in a meaningful way, the way that lands for them. Hence why a lot of them then feel like a paycheck because it's not aligned to, um, it's not aligned to them for the most part. So they don't really want to be going into the office you know, doing what they're doing. So then it's like, ugh, I'm going and doing what I'm doing and I'm not appreciated. Well, you know, you're not going to be appreciated if you don't appreciate yourself, right? Um, just the way it is. So, yeah, I totally agree. You know, you re reminded me of that and it's, it's key to, you can have both, right? You can have the outer riches and the inner riches, you know? Oh, yeah. Gain the world <laughs> by gaining your soul versus losing it, right? It's key. Oh, it's absolutely key. It's a, you know, what you're doing is you're asking better questions of yourself in that journal, right? Um, you're asking a better question. How can I do this? How can I have both? Right. And that's a total different. Again, we talked about languaging with should, but your languaging is not, can I have this? It's how can I have this? Mm -hmm. When you do that, your mind is going to come up with solutions and, mm -hmm. and trying to bring this back to what the normal topic was originally, which was of scarcity mindset, you know, what you want to do is how, you know, how can I have both? How can I have and? And when it comes to your wife, guys, right? How can you have a thriving business and a thriving relationship, right? What does that look like? So a couple things, keys that we want to leave you guys with is one, watch your languaging. Languaging matters. How often are you using should, right? In your inner dialogue, I should be working right now, but I'm, I'm hanging out with my wife. Or I should be working, but I'm with the kids playing, right? That should is an alarm right there. It's a trigger to let you know that you're in comparison mode, therefore in scarcity mode, right? So allow yourself just laugh and giggle a little bit if you can, but get back into an abundance mindset of what you really want. Another thing you wanna do, guys, is you really wanna dial in your morning routines, right? The alpha rise and shine is definitely the way to go. It's what we teach the powerful man and making sure that you have those in place because that gives you a springboard of which to jump off for in your day, making sure that you have those in place and that you're in cycle. 
And the third I'll leave you with right now, and then Tim, I'll jump it over to you because I know there's a lot more that we can do. But the third one I'm going to say is don't judge yourself from being there. It's really just about recognizing. If, you're, if you find yourself like, crap, I'm in a scarcity mindset and I don't know how to get out of it, that's cool. Ask for help. Simple as that, right? But just recognize that you're there is going to help move that ball forward to getting to more of an abundancy mindset, more of a, a, an area where you'll be pulled by passion rather than driven by fear. Mm. Yeah, the only thing I'd, I'd add to that, I want to keep it simple, is, you know, as you do your morning routine, as Doug said, we recommend the Alpha Rise and Shine, but whatever you do, just make sure it includes some kind of reflective practice. Um, I'd love for you to become aware of the the stories that are coming up for you as you examine this conversation and as you lean into it, right? Uh, as you even entertain the idea of having more abundance in your life, what would that look like for you? Would that mean that you leave the office at four o'clock? Maybe you pick the kids up from school, take them for ice cream and you get home before your wife finishes work and you're already cooking dinner. Um, get clear on what it might it might look like for you. And then, you know, as you go about living that or even contemplating living that, what comes up for you? Maybe it's a story of, you know, that you're lazy if you do that. You know, you, you can't leave work at that time. Why can't you leave work at that time? If you're the boss, why can't you? Well, if I do that, it sets a, it sets a, a bad example to the staff. Or why does it just, just continue leaning in? to get to the root of what's really going on for you, what's, what conditioning you've really uh, unconsciously embedded in your own mind that's causing you to be, or contributing at least, to you being driven in this particular way. Because when you start to become aware of those stories and start to de- untangle them, um, you can really start to break free from the shackles that are keeping you stuck. Um, and if you want to accelerate this, of course, you know, apply for the activation method and the alpha reset. It's definitely an accelerant. I think like you said, Doug, before, um, you know, to rewire, usually something, it can often take a, a, a shift, right? An immersion in order to rewire quickly, at least anyway, for you to really embody the sensation and the reality that this could be different. And I think that's what the guys get there, right? Amongst a lot of other things, they get a real immersion of what it could be like and they'll leave there refusing to go back because they've also got perspective and tools and other things with it as well. So if you want to fast track this, then obviously, you know, you may want to head over to thealpharista.com, check it out. If not, then that's cool. Just do the exercises uh, that we've spoken about here. Uh, Tim, thanks for the great conversation. Guys, I'd love to hear what you got out of this as well. Uh, That's it for us for another episode of The Powerful Man Show. We'll see you next time. And for those that are lucky enough, we are going to be doing a Facebook Live coming up this Friday. So this this Friday when you listen to this, there'll be a Facebook Live of Tim, the powerful man himself in there. All right, guys, take care, and we'll talk to you soon. 